A few weeks ago I built a radio controlled monowheel. A monowheel is a vehicle with one large wheel that surrounds the motor or engine and rider. Larger monowheels with human riders are quite common but appear to be generally unstable due to manual throttle control and steering. So in my monowheel I attempted to add some auto stability control using an inertial measurement unit to measure the angle and then automatically control the velocity to hold the internals at a specific angle. I also attempted some dynamic side to side stability control, although the programming port on my Arduino got broken before I really got to tune it, and I think this may have contributed to making it more unstable in the end due to oscillations that built up if we went too fast, which mostly happened driving downhill. I previously did some experiments with physical spinning gyroscopes. You should check out my videos about this, but essentially we found that as a spinning mass is rotated in one axis, it exerts force in a perpendicular axis. If we actively control one of the axes then we can drive force in the other axis. And if we control the active axis with an inertial measurement unit, we can stabilise a device and make it balance on one edge. It won't balance without the active control though, if we turn the servo off, then all that happens is that as it falls over, the gyro wants to exert force in a perpendicular axis and it tries to twist. This is called a control moment gyroscope and this type of technology has been used commercially to stabilise boats. I then went on to build both a two wheel inline balancing robot and also a robot that could balance on one wheel. These robots had a pair of spinning gyroscopes which spin in opposite directions and actively rotate in opposite directions, so that the gyroscopic precession only affects the rotation of the robot in one side to side axis. The vertical rotation of the gyros was actively controlled by a PID controller which got data from an inertial measurement unit. So now I'm going to try and build a monowheel which is stabilised by a pair of control moment gyros. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The track for this one's pretty big, so it's made in multiple pieces and I've made these little recessed tabs which I'm super gluing on and that's going to bridge the gap to make that nice and strong on the seam lines. I'm also screwing them in while the glue dries and then removing the screws again once it's set up because the super glue should be more than strong enough. I've got a TPU tyre which again is in four pieces and that fits on and it's screwed on all the way round. Now this one is significantly bigger than the previous version and it's pretty flexible and in fact the last one was and that's why I've not used herringbone gears on these, I've just used straight cut gears and I'll have something else to align them. So I printed the spur that's going to run this and be driven by the motor but it's a bit sticky in some places so I reprinted another version which has a slightly higher pressure angle and that runs much much more smoothly, although I didn't bother reprinting the track because that seems to run just fine. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project. There's a couple of bearings in here. We've got one on the inside of that spur gear and another one that fits on the end that's going to support it because it's bearing most of the load of the robot. The motor is from Gimson Robotics and this is a fairly high power DC motor. It's a 13.7 to 1 ratio and that has a little collar on so it actually fits right inside that spur gear that's a bit like a cup shape. The output shaft of the motor and its attached gearbox fits into the end of my spur gear and it's attached with a grub screw there and a captive nut. And that means that the spur gear runs around the actual body of the motor instead of being stuck out at one end so that makes a much more compact unit and that seems to run just fine. The reason of course for this is that it makes things much better balanced and it means the motor doesn't stick out of one side of the gear track where it would sort of bash on the ground as we lean over to steer and the mass is equal on both sides pretty much. This motor fits into a bracket that fits onto the base for the whole thing and then there's of course the other bearing that fits on the nose of that spur gear 
that fits on an extra support so it can just handle the load of everything on top. I'm using the same gyroscope flywheels that I was using before and these are just 3D prints full of lots of ball bearings. They're not as dense as they could be due to all of the extra air and holes and plastic but they seem to work fine and exerted quite a lot of force. And these are spun by 260 kV big brushless motors which are turning G aero drive 9225s. There are two of these which still work in opposite directions and those move with a gear track at the top. So one of those is going to be activated by a Dynamix or Servo, which is a fairly big chunky one that I've used in the previous builds. So with that attached to the chassis, I've used very similar parts to the one wheel balancing robot. And all of that hangs together and we can see those two gyros move in opposite direction due to that gear track at the top. And we've got the drive wheel below. That of course fits into our gear track to make the monowheel. And it seems to run pretty well. So quite a bit bigger than the last one I made, it's probably 180% of the size, something like that if we compare the height of them. So a much bigger machine. I've used bearings to align and constrain that track in the right place as well as some idlers like I did last time. A lot of people suggested herringbone gears but with the flexibility I was pretty sure those were going to pop out. And there's another pair of bearings each side down at the bottom just to make sure that track all stays aligned and doesn't all fall to pieces in motion. Now there is a slight flat on the tyre profile but it's actually very difficult to get it to balance in the middle if not impossible. So it is quite well balanced though due to the way that motor's fitted but it won't stand up on its own. I fitted electronics which hopefully are going to keep it balanced. And that includes an Arduino Mega with the Dynamics or Shield to control that servo that operates the gyros. I've also got an Arduino Nano with an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit that's going to measure the angle and send that over serial to the Arduino Mega. The big DC motor that drives the main wheel is driven by a BTS 7960 motor driver. And I've also got two Hobby King X-Car Beast ESCs for the two brushless motors that spin the gyros. The brushless motors are running on 24 volts, so there's two 11.1 volt LiPos in series to get that, and I've got another two smaller ones in parallel, so I've got 12 volts to drive the Dynamix or Servo. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry, and they provide high quality, low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB ship worldwide, they have fast build time so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The JLC store also sells PCB coupons and offers free PCB designs and 3D designs. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. I've got various knobs and switches which allow me to tune the balancing set point and turn functions on and off. So the inertial measurement unit measures in two axes and that gives me the two angles front and back and side to side so we can process that data with PID controllers and try and keep it balanced. So let's just turn up the speed on those ESCs which we have to do gradually because they're speed controllers and not current controllers. If we suddenly increase the speed they draw a whack of current and they're rated at 120 amps which would probably burn the motors out. So once I've got that up to speed we can set the set point and get that balancing just in the middle. Now the gyros can't exert a force unless they're actually moving, so we have to be very careful they don't run their end stops, otherwise they'll stop and the thing won't balance anymore. And there's some more details on this in the previous builds I did with gyros. But it looks like that'll actually balance and it's pretty stable and you can see that PID controller is reacting quite quickly to move the gyros in their vertical axis to exert a force side to side on the robot and cause it to basically attend to zero to balance in the middle. And that seems to work quite well. It's pretty active and you can see that's balancing on a single point on its tire. And even if I try and push it off, it compensates and holds itself in the middle. 
So I also used another PID controller to drive it backwards and forwards as it leans, so this is a bit like a Segway scooter, a hoverboard or a two-wheel balancing robot. So this is actually actively driving as I'm leaning it to try and catch up. It's set to zero degrees and of course as I tilt it then it tries to drive to catch up to zero degrees. I also have a function on the stick here on the remote which allows me to alter that angle and that's how I generally drive a two-wheel balancing robot along. So let's see how well it drives. Well we've seen it balancing side to side and of course if I push it then it's quite stable and I can push it back to front and it will try to drive to catch up to zero degrees and it will drive along. Now the brushless motors which are spinning those gyros really fast are actually off centre on the pivot point. The gyro mass itself is on centre on that vertical pivot point but the motor is stuck on the back. And that means that as those gyros rotate on the vertical axis to compensate for the side to side stability the brushless motors actually offset mass slightly backwards and forwards and that causes the thing to drive because there's mass at the top that's causing it to lean over. But let's try and drive that manually now. If I alter that set point for balancing back to front, it should try and hold that angle and we can see that that actually works but it doesn't actually cause it to drive anymore. And also if I modify that angle too quickly then those spinning gyros exert a force in the wrong axis and cause it all to twist and spin out of control which isn't very good. So with a balancing robot like a two wheel balancing robot we just offset the set point and try and make it balance a slightly different angle to absolutely upright and that means that it has to balance by driving up to catch itself because otherwise it falls over and it causes it to drive forward. In my case that doesn't happen and I think that's because the mass of the flywheels is offsetting the mass of the batteries which are quite low down. So for that reason I've added some more mass at the top in the form of some extra batteries that don't actually do anything, they're just there to provide some more mass. So now if I'm very careful I can drive it backwards and forwards and you'll notice the top of this is leaning forwards to drive in that direction whereas with the other monowheel I built it was actually the bottom that was leaning forwards and causing the wheel to roll in that direction so this one works more like a dynamically stable two wheel or one wheel balancing robot rather than a traditional monowheel. So there isn't an encoder on this motor so there's no chance of a position hold algorithm so at the moment it's pretty sketchy and of course those gyro motors offsetting their load often cause it to run away as well depending on which way it's leaning side to side. I've also implemented the ability to change the leaning angle side to side with another stick on the controller. So you should just be able to see that as I yank that stick sideways it offsets that set point and the idea here is that we can lean to steer just like we did with the previous version. It's pretty difficult to drive though because if those gyros ever reach their end stops then they can't move any further and it can't keep balancing so it just falls over. So trying to steer just a little bit is actually very difficult without it twisting. The other strange thing is as I lean to the left it actually steers to the right instead of steering in the direction that I'm leaning as you'd expect. And I think that's because the gyros are offset from their vertical axis which means they exert a force that causes the whole robot to twist and turn unexpectedly. So what I think is happening is normally we use these gyros to stabilise this way side to side and normally they're completely upright but as we drive along and we tilt the chassis like this then they start to sort of exert a force like this which is of course as I lean this way causing it to steer this way so I guess the moral of the story is not to use gyroscopic stabilisation unless the gyroscopes are perfectly upright or at least pretty much upright for most of the time. This one of course deliberately leans over to drive and that's causing it to twist in another axis as those gyroscopes have gyroscopic precession in that slightly off centre axis. But anyway I'm going to publish the CAD and code if anyone wants to have a look although I don't recommend of course building it as it is because it's pretty sketchy. But if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description to this video and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright that's all for now.